and I'm a natural born fat guy. Even though I was born 175, I gained 125 pounds. I was lazy. That's who I am. I'm a guy that likes to sit back, watch TV and eat pizza. Like everybody. Like everybody. Like everybody. So I want to I want to tell you right that's now. That's the mama voice. That's the mama voice. Here, put your feet up. I'm giving you some cookies that's and right. milk. Take it easy. Right? That's right. And for a guy that never had that, like me, I love my mom, but she was working. All I crave is that mama voice. Please love David. Love David. That voice got me to 297 pounds. Matter she used fact, to cook for you too. She used to cook for me. Matter of <laughs> fact, in the book, I talk about yeah. it. When, when I got out of the military and I started gaining this weight a lot, um, my standard breakfast was eight cinnamon rolls, you know, like basically, um, I think six to eight scrambled eggs, you know, half a pound of bacon, fruity pebbles, lucky charms, whatever it may be. That was my standard breakfast. So that was your way of getting away from the pain. In that's your right. Brain. That was your vice. That was my vice. Now, for some people, it's alcohol or drugs or that's sex right. or shopping. For you, it was food. It was food and also being comfortable. Whatever I wanted, I did. And that's where I started seeing myself get further and further away from my true self. And your true self is found, honestly, in that very uncomfortable zone. So, But you couldn't take it anymore. You had an epiphany where right. you just said, I don't want to be this guy anymore. Do you ever think that if it hadn't have been that morning and that Navy SEAL thing had to have been on the Discovery Channel when you got home from work, that that might have not flipped the switch and you'd be out there 350 pound David Goggins right now? The thing about it was, it wasn't like it was an epiphany. I had this haunting voice in the back of my head. We, a lot of us have it. Yeah. We just ignore it. And it was there for years. So I knew in the back of my mind that I could pull off this whatever. Whatever I wanted, I knew I could. You knew you could. I knew that, but I, I was afraid of the work because I wasn't gifted with brains. I wasn't gifted with God-given talent as far as like athleticism. So I knew to get to where I had to go, to be in the same playing field as these men, to even try out for this program, I knew the work was going to be something that I didn't want to even, even attack. So I was just putting it off. But yet you did it. Because it haunted me. Okay. The voice in my head said, you know what, man? You're going to die never even trying to reach your full potential. And how's that going to feel? So I'm going to live even while I'm dead. I'm going to be because I believe in a higher power, whatever it may be. I don't know what it is. I believe that your mind lives forever. Some spirit, some, something lives forever. I'm going to be haunted by the mere fact that I literally just, that's what I was. You wasted that life. That's what I was, man. And you look back and here lies David Goggins, a punk. That's it. And I get to live. So whatever heaven or hell is, you're in hell the rest of your life. The rest of your life. And if there is a God, which I hope to God there is, knowing what I put myself through now, whatever memories I have, if there's any at all, I'll be a happy man. But I knew that I was going to pay for this while I was living or while I was dead. I was going to pay for this. Because basically, to me, it was a huge sin. I'm basically just going to sit here and just be a comfortable man. That and not even try. Wasting your life is a sin, it's right? It's a sin. It is. I'm not even going to try. You said that the one thing that always bothered you was when you died someday, if you meet your maker, that he would pull out a list and say, no, 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 no. You were supposed to be this badass motherfucker. Right. And instead... You turned into this cockroach slinging, right. you know, fruity pebble eating motherfucker. Yeah. So, and, that, um, and like you said, you almost have to live with that for eternity. Somehow. Right. So, so how I talk about it is basically I, I visualize a lot. And so I visualize. You always have. Always have. Well, okay. yep. always have, but a lot of it was very disgusting. Okay. It was like, what was stuff. me? Oh, okay. What was me? Which is worse. Which yes. Is just as bad. Yes. Just and, as powerful. But I developed a reality that wasn't real. That's the thing we always do. We can have a great life, but we always build this reality around the one thing we don't have. So therefore, our great life, we don't even see it. We see the one piece of clothing we weren't able to get versus the amazing things we have. So we focus on that. I was the king of focusing on the one bad thing in my life. The one bad person called me nigger. The, Everything bad, I focused on that. 
But over here was a beautiful reality of my life. Even though I came from nothing, where I could have taken my mind for the possibilities of where I can go if I work harder. That was all over here. But I lived in the filth over here. So basically, what I started doing was, when I was 297, I thought about, my God, man, like this could be my life. And I thought, okay, what, what does heaven look like? I don't know. No one does, I imagine. So I was like, okay, I imagine that it was a big long line and you got judgment and you're God. Let's say you're God and I'm just David Goggins. Big long line and you're talking to Jane, Jane Doe. Jane Doe goes by and behind you is a big whiteboard. And the whiteboard has like uh, just a piece of paper and you pull it down. The next person in line is David Goggins. And on this board, it has all this stuff on it, but I can't see because I'm too far back in line. So I come up, I sit down now, you're talking to me. David, congratulations, you made it to heaven. How you feel? And right now I'm a 300 pound man, Eco Lab guy. I'm 71 years old. This is what I'm thinking at 24 years old, okay? I'm dead, I'm in heaven, you're God. You pull the paper down, it says David Goggins. I'm reading it. And I'm looking at it, and it has my name, but on this paper, it says everything about you. Everything, because God knows all. And I'm looking at it, and I'm seeing 185 pounds, Navy SEAL, changed people's lives, all these amazing things. Public speaker, blah, 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 motivational, all the best-selling book. I look at God, I said, God, you, the name is right, but what's on here is not me. He goes, it should have been you. This was the life that you were supposed to live but you didn't try. So this is the life that you have. So what I think to myself is, are you in heaven? Am I talking to God or am I talking to the devil? Because I'm in hell now to see that that was supposed to be my life, but because I didn't try hard enough, because I didn't put forth every single bit of an ounce of pressure in my body into being better. They ended up being a 300 pound guy that made a thousand dollars a month and I was fine there. That was okay. So that's how my mind works. It works that way to see where is this going to take me? What's the possibility? So we're all in a battle with our own brains. That's all life. That's it's, all life is. It's the most powerful thing in the world is your own brain. It can work for you or against you. And when did you start to realize that the visualization could work for you? And as, as opposed to focusing on all those bad things that happened, all the things you didn't have, the people that called you names, all the stuff in Brazil and Indiana, and you started thinking, wait a second, I just visualized this, and now I can take it to the next level, next level. Because the visualization got you through the SEAL training, I think. It did. And I was able to visualize the end. So, so before, so when I was 297, and I was all fat and out of shape, and I couldn't run a quarter mile, and I was drinking milkshakes and eating boxes of donuts, I visualized, man, how would it feel? So after I watched that show on Discovery Channel, for a brief moment, I was, so there was 22 guys that graduated. I watched this segment on TV about these guys going through Navy SEAL training. And I couldn't even, I, I wasn't a great swimmer. I was afraid of the water, all this crap, man. And um, I saw these guys just quitting. But at the very end, it says 22 guys, this commanding officer's up there and he gives this great speech. I was like, man, I wonder. So I started visualizing me being the 23rd guy in these dress whites, sitting there with these guys, getting that Navy SEAL, you know, graduating this Navy SEAL training. I was like, God. So I put myself there. I was like, man, that's, that's an amazing feeling. I put myself there at 297, not even able to do anything that these great men were doing. I said, man, if I could feel that, that would change my life. If I could just feel that one, it's, it, it lasts for one second. You get that certificate, you walk across the stage, and what's next? But I didn't know that then. My mind was that I thought I'd live in that moment forever. So I said, wow, man, if I could just feel like them, if and, I could feel like them. And what was that feeling you wanted so bad? Respect, accomplishment? No. Victory. I wanted to win. Not like beat somebody else. It wasn't about that. I, I, I just wanted to go the distance. Everything in my life, when something got hard, I quit. If it was reading, that's why, you know, I wasn't great at reading. I wasn't great at writing, so I just quit. I couldn't catch on as fast as you. I had to work harder than you, so I quit. 
You know, I wasn't great at things, so I quit. You know, I'm, I'm not good at this. Like, man, if I could just go that distance, that extra mile, to just go, just, just to finish. I want to finish. I want to feel victory. And victory for me wasn't winning. It was just finishing. So I said, you know what? If I could feel like these guys feel, it would change my life. But what I realized, the best feeling I had was when I was by myself trying to lose this weight. I had, I had to lose it in literally less than three months. 106 pounds in less than three months. And literally, I started feeling victory just by putting myself in the battle. It wasn't about going to Navy SEAL training. It wasn't about being the 23rd guy in that chair. I started realizing, man, just by going to war with myself every day and putting these challenges and these goals and these obstacles, these insurmountable obstacles. So it wasn't about losing 106 pounds. Me losing five pounds was an accomplishment. Me losing 10 pounds and then 50 pounds. And then the more I did this, the more I gained confidence. And then the more I gained confidence, the more I realized, fuck these Navy SEALs, man. The, the, these guys can't do what I'm doing right now. I had no coach, had no trainer, had no money. I didn't know how to lose weight. I had no knowledge of what I was doing. I was just working. I was just sacrificing. And then through that, all these different tools started coming up. But I would have never found these tools if I didn't put myself in a very uncomfortable place. We all look for toughness. We all want it. But we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Those of you who are listening to this, whoever hear this, you will not find it. I was trying to look for it everywhere. The only way you find it is to drown yourself in a position where you're just out of sorts, where you can't swim and you're drowning. Where you're drowning. You're drowning in life. But you say, you know what, man? Fuck that. I'm gonna figure out how to fucking backstroke or fucking something. I'm going to figure out how to, and then through, through figuring out all these tools, your mind starts to, when you quit, your mind does this. Because you're out. Once you say, I'm not going to quit, this is the 40%. When, when you quit, your mind says, we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say, fuck you, uh-uh, this sucks, I'm drowning, I'm miserable, I'm suffering, I'm broken but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind is it does this. It says, fuck, he's not leaving. So we got to expand. We got to grow. We got to figure this fucking thing out. So then these compartments in your brain start to have, they have to work. They have to work. And then you start to engage parts of your mind that you never engaged before, but you can't engage it by sitting back in these nice chairs drinking this nice water, talking to you, talking about what I want to do. That's where, so that's where the 40% thing comes in. It comes in when you're in suffer mode and you say, I'm not going to quit. You're forcing your brain now to operate on a level it's not used to, but then it becomes used to it.